The movie opens with the view of a high bridge above a clear lake. A truck drives around on the bridge and through the city on a brightly sunlit morning. A woman rushes through a mansion towards an auction. A man stands in front of the podium calling out for potential bidders. He auctions amazing art pieces to rich clients at the front. The auction has stopped midway as most of the art pieces are stuck on the way for delivery. The man whose name is Michael rushes out of the auction and asks his assistant, Helen, to get everything ready for the evening. He asks her if three months is too soon to propose and Helen, who secretly has a crush on him, tries to demotivate him. Nonetheless, he looks forward to the proposal. His friend Philip gives him a lift to pick up his girlfriend, Gina. Philip wishes him good luck and meets Gina who kisses him as soon as she sees him. This gives Michael some hope and they go running through the city. Gina makes fun of him for running awkwardly. They go to a beautiful restaurant and Michael is nervous. Gina tells him she'll soon get him to meet her family but it's not time now. Michael asks her about her father's restaurant so that he could sneak in sometime. He decides to proceed to propose, so he asks the restaurant owner to help him. The owner is delighted and ecstatically helps him. She urges Gina to eat the cookie which has his proposal. Gina doesn't want to, as the whole restaurant seems to be looking at the couple. She declines but the owner insists. Michael gets uncomfortable and urges Gina to eat it. Gina agrees but there's no proposal inside. Turns out, the proposal cookie was sent to another couple and the other girl ecstatically says yes. The owner and Michael realize what has happened and Michael quickly takes the proposal from the other woman's hand and presents his ring to Gina. Gina is shocked at this. The restaurant owner starts to annoy the couple and Michael tells her to go away. She walks away begrudgingly. Gina says no and runs away without a reason. The other woman is sobbing violently and her boyfriend glares at Michael as he apologizes and leaves. He's very mournful and goes back to Gina's apartment. He asks the doorman about Gina who says she came back crying, packed her bags and ran away. Michael tells the man, Jimmy, that he asked Gina to marry him and Jimmy congratulates him. Michael asks about Gina and Jimmy replies she could have gone to her father's house. Michael asks for the address but Jimmy doesn't have it. He tells Michael to go to Gina's father's restaurant as he could get the address there. Michael thanks him and leaves, but as soon as Michael is out of sight, Jimmy calls and informs Gina's father. Michael soon goes to Gina's father's restaurant called the Letratoria. Gina's brother, Richie, recognizes him instantly and goes to bring his father. All the people in the restaurant seem to know him and each other. One guy gets aggressive towards his girlfriend as she appreciates Michael's line of business. The others tell him to calm down. Just then, Gina's father, Mr. Vidal, comes in and greets Michael politely. All this time, no one ever tells Michael about their line of industry. Mr. Vidal tells Michael that he really likes him and they sit down to get to know each other. Michael really wants to ask where Gina is, but he doesn't even get the chance to speak. Michael tries to go to the bathroom where he sees a freezer, and man just standing inside shivering. He doesn't say much and goes back to Mr. Vidal whose name is Frank. Frank shows him pictures of Gina as a kid and says how much he loves Gina and how he's thankful she got a guy who loves her so much. Frank tells him that he already know how Michael is going to ask for Gina's hand in marriage. He doesn't know about the proposal beforehand, so to save himself from embarrassment, and to prevent Frank's impression of him to go bad, Michael asks Frank for Gina's hand in marriage. Frank happily says yes and welcomes Michael to the family. Michael is brought home by Frank and he goes into Gina's room to see her sobbing. Frank calls out to her and she hugs him tightly saying how much she loves him. She's bawling her eyes out but also loves him. She tells he shouldn't have ruined their relationship. Michael is confused as to what's going on. She says she wants to get married, but can't and Michael asks her to explain. She tells him to come with her as they can't talk about it in the house. They start walking away when Gina tells him she can't marry him because of her father. Michael is relieved and says Frank loved him and they've met with good relations. Gina is shocked but goes on to explain everything that Michael met were mob kings and belonged to crime families. She continues saying to everyone that her father is a very dangerous man with crime affiliates as he's from the mafia himself. Gina says that they would affect him too but Michael is adamant. He says he wants to marry her but Gina tells him she cannot let him as they would lie to him and frame him for something as well. She loves him too much to either marry him or let him go. Michael tells her he loves her and she could prepare for anything, as she knows her father and his associates. Gina is convinced and promises to do everything together. Gina finally accepts his proposal and they're both elated. A huge party is thrown for their engagement, whereas Michael meets almost all of Frank's friends. Uncle Vito, Frank's old friend, congratulates them and Gina tells Michael to be careful but polite. Uncle Vito asks Michael about killings going around, and Michael accidentally tells them he understands insinuating their business. Frank corrects him and Michael quickly composes himself. Uncle Vito takes Michael and Gina around the house showing them his art collection. Uncle Vito tries to get Michael to work for him but Michael cordially denies. Frank sings and dances at the party ecstatic that his daughter is finally getting married. The next day, Michael goes to his office to see an old lady trying to buy some paintings. He has a nice chat with her and invites her to that evening's auction. He suddenly realizes that all his colleagues and even the truck drivers who were extremely rude to him, seem to be scared of him. He realizes this is all Uncle Vito's doing, 
who wants Michael to auction his son's painting for $50,000. Michael tells Frank that it's impossible and people wouldn't buy it but Frank doesn't take it seriously. Just then, Gina comes into his office and Michael tries his best to now show Gina the painting, as she had already warned him about this. He's scared that she could call off the wedding to keep him safe. He tries to seduce her to distract her but just then, some potential buyers come in. At night, the auction starts and Uncle Vito comes in. Michael is nervous but presents the last painting as well. A man buys it to impress Uncle Vito as Michael breathes a sigh of relief. Michael's boss appreciates the painting as well, and Uncle Vito cordially thanks Michael. He's confused but lets it slide. Michael tells Frank that he wouldn't be doing any favors anymore and Frank assures him but seems unsure himself. Frank doesn't talk about it much, and hangs up intending to use Michael further. As he's going back to the office, Michael finds out that his rival auction house had been set on fire. He realizes what he's gotten himself into. Just then, the FBI comes up and tells Michael that the painting given by Uncle Vito was used for money laundering, and investigates him further. Just then, Frank shows up and hides as soon as he sees the FBI. Michael tries to be calm, as he's scared the FBI might find out the recent fire was caused by Uncle Vito as well. As soon as the FBI is gone, Frank comes to him and two other men come in, with the painting sent by Uncle Vito once again. Gina comes to pick up Michael for the wedding dress and Frank accompanies them. Michael tells Frank he can't do it any longer and to talk to Uncle Vito but Frank urges him to do it one last time. Michael tries to tell Gina but Frank warns him, saying he's in too deep and Gina might call off the wedding, so Michael bites his tongue and agrees. They pick their suits for the wedding and Gina smiles thinking everything is okay. Gina offers to come to the auction, but Michael consoles Gina to not come and makes up some excuses. That night, Michael puts up Uncle Vito's son, Jonathan's, painting up again. Uncle Vito plans to launder money again with the painting, but an old lady buys it. Jonathan wants the women to buy it, as she's offering a lot of money, but Michael doesn't let her and sells it to Uncle Vito's guy. He quickly rushes over to Gina's place to tell her the truth. It's their three-month anniversary and they're celebrating when Jonathan barges in. Gina confronts Michael before he can say anything and Jonathan tells her about their deal, and how Michael got a lot of commission from Jonathan's painting. Jonathan goes on to threaten Michael to pay up the money that old lady was offering. He starts beating up Michael. Gina tells him to stop but when he doesn't, she points the gun towards the ceiling, and shoots in order to threaten Jonathan. But the bullet ricochets and hits Jonathan instead. He dies on the spot. Gina starts panicking and Michael tries to call the police, but Gina tells him Uncle Vito owns half the police, and wouldn't like it if he found out they put his son to eternal sleep. Michael tells Gina to go home to her father. Gina realizes they're in too deep. She rushes home as Frank come to Michael's help. Frank seems to be calm but is scared for his life. The two quickly clean up the mess and wrap Jonathan's body in plastic. They try to walk away with the body when Michael's neighbor sees them. Michael makes up a lie and they run away with the body in Frank's car. But they forget that Jonathan's car is still parked in front of Gina's apartment. They drive somewhere like a junkyard and start digging, to bury the body but just then, Frank hears some voices as sees there's some other men also digging. The men notice Frank and start shooting. Michael hides as they shoot back and forth. Frank finds out the shooters are actually old friend of his. They hug and chat about like old friends. When asked about Michael, Frank says he's also a Don. They don't tell the others about Jonathan. Michael is introduced as little Mickey Blue Eyes, the son of Big Mickey who was a dangerous mob boss who passed away. They don't bury Jonathan there due to the others and drive someplace else. Michael tells Frank that if the murder ever gets out, he'd be going to prison instead of Gina. The next day, Gina is shaken up and Michael tries to talk to her, and urge her not to break up with him. Gina tells him she's listened to him tomorrow one last time and give her decision. Michael agrees and goes back to her apartment, to clean up the apartment and check for any evidences. Just then, he hears the news about Jonathan's body being found, but Frank had managed to frame another rival mob boss for the murder. The funeral is held and the rival mob boss, Rissily, calls to meet Uncle Vito. Rissily meets up with Uncle Vito soon after, and tells him that they had nothing to do with Jonathan's murder. They instead give Uncle Vito the address of where Jonathan's cat was last seen. Frank realizes this and asks to handle the situation. Frank gets to Gina's apartment and plans to put the lady to eternal sleep, who saw them leave with Jonathan's body, but Michael stops him. Just then, Rissily's men come around to help Frank. They recognize Michael as Mickey Blue. Frank distracts them saying they've checked the whole house, and asks them to meet up for steak. They agree. On the way to the restaurant, Frank teaches Michael how to talk like his supposed dead father, Big Mickey. They reach the restaurant to see Jonathan's painting hanging on the wall. They find out the owner is one of the men, 
who helped Uncle Vito to launder money who recognizes Michael very well. Michael tries to hide as one of the waitresses come in and sit on Michael's lap to greet him. Unfortunately, Gina's best friend sees the woman sitting on Michael's lap and takes pictures of them together. When the owner comes to greet them, Michael kisses the woman in an attempt to avoid the owner. Gina's best friend captures all those pictures. Michael gets deeper into trouble as every second passes. He tries his best to put on an accent to redeem himself but then, his boss runs into him. Michael pulls him away and asks him he'll explain everything later. As he's talking, his gun falls on the ground and all the people in the restaurant get scared. In an attempt to save himself some trouble, he kicks out his boss from the restaurant. Brissily's men are already suspicious. They get out of the restaurant and Michael is frustrated. He couldn't even meet Gina for lunch. Frank tries to calm him down but Michael is scared he might lose Gina. He goes to her apartment to meet her but she doesn't let him in as she's seen the pictures of him with another woman. She thinks he's lying when Michael explains the whole situation and tells him they're over. Michael is devastated but leaves quietly. On the other hand, Frank goes back to kidnap the lady who saw him and Michael. He breaks into her apartment to see Uncle Vito already there. He knows everything. Frank confesses everything and Uncle Vito is dangerously calm. Frank hurriedly calls Gina to explain everything but it seems Uncle Vito already sent his men to stay with Gina. Frank can't explain everything but urges her to stay calm and not tell anyone that she broke up with Gina. She agrees. Frank goes back to Michael and tells him that Uncle Vito knows everything and that he's been sent to eliminate Michael. Uncle Vito wants Frank to eliminate Michael at his wedding but since they've already broken up, Frank tells him he needs to eliminate Michael now. If he doesn't, Uncle Vito's men will eliminate Gina. Michael agrees to this and prepares to get shot. Frank apologizes and shoots him but nothing happens to Michael. It turns out, they've contacted the FBI to frame Uncle Vito and are planning to fake Michael's death. The bullets and blood are fake. Gina is with Uncle Vito's guard, Vinny. She's stressed because she doesn't know what's going on. Gina takes Vinny and goes to a flower shop. She tells Vinny to stay outside as she'll be safe with Michael inside. The FBI pretend to be florists and Michael along with the FBI explain to Gina about framing Uncle Vito. Gina hesitantly agrees to the plan. She goes away with Vinny. It's the wedding day and everything is set. Everyone from the waiters to caterers are FBI. Even the priest who is to officiate their wedding is an officer. They explain the whole plan to Michael. Guns get distributed at the kitchen. They run into a little problem with the timing as the wedding starts. Gina and Michael read their vows. Michael kisses Gina and Uncle Vito gets more excited by the second. The wedding party commences and Michael goes up to Uncle Vito. He propositions a huge deal and walks away to give him time. Frank berates him for this but Michael tells him to calm down. As expected, Vito calls for Michael to discuss the business. Michael discusses his plans with Vito who is incredibly impressed. Just as he's about to say yes, Michael's boss disrupts their meetings. Vito walks away and Michael accidentally pops the blood bag attached to his chest. He hurriedly rushes out of there with his boss. The speeches start. Vito's guard goes to check on Michael only to see him and his boss inside a cubicle. He thinks they're up to something and leaves. On the other hand, Vito switches Frank's toy gun with a live one. The FBI find out and plan to abort their operation but their head orders them to continue on. Gina and Michael are brought in to say their speeches. Michael is bound to die but the plan is continued. Michael is told about the guns getting switched and his face goes pale. He goes in to say the speech but no words come out of his mouth. Finally, he starts speaking and Frank gets Vito to confess. Vito only speaks in discreet languages and doesn't really confess. At that moment, Michael indirectly tells Frank that he'd rather die than see harm come to Gina. Frank is stunned and doesn't know what to do. The FBI starts pouring in and Frank shoots the wall in an attempt to save Michael. Michael pops his blood pouch too late and Vito finds out. Vito orders Vinny to kill both Gina and Michael. The FBI get their confession but it's too late. Gina is shot and then the FBI shoot Vinny. Gina is pronounced dead as Vito is taken away. Smiling. Michael is devastated. They take Gina away in an ambulance where Michael and Frank hug each and sob violently. Just then, Gina gets up and claims that this was all an act. Turns out, Vinny was in on the plan as well and they both were hired separately by the FBI. Michael tells Gina he loves her but she hands him the photos of him kissing another woman. He runs after Gina and explains everything to her. She realizes he was, in fact, with her father. He tells her everything and Gina forgives him. He asks her to marry him for real this time and she agrees. They kiss and live a happy life ever after.